it up to, you know, maybe one big thing. So I, I feel extremely, extremely fortunate that, I mean, obviously not everyone gets that uh, opportunity to work with so many great people. And I consider one of the rainy years and one of the greats of all time of North American karting, not just in the engine, but just in the industry, one of the smartest people that I've ever worked with. And to be close enough, you know, ha- you know, logistically wise where I could drive that hour and a half or two hours or wherever it was to his house. And for him to let, you know, some punk kid, you know, 17, 16, 17 year old punk smelly kid live in his house, you know, and, and let him work in the, in his shop, you know, and, and absorb all that knowledge and have the patience to, to do it. I mean, I mean, like I said, I consider myself extremely fortunate for that. And I think Rainey and if Rainey ever listens to this, he probably never will because he's so wrapped up in his own work and that's probably why he's so, he's so successful. But I mean, it, it, I don't ever feel like I can repay him enough for what he's done through Throughout my career and continues to do throughout my my life and, and career. Yeah, no, it's uh, since this is the Gary show, we won't turn it into the Swede Tech show. But one one thing I've I've come to really watch when it comes to Rainey and other people in their programs is he. There's going to be very, very few people that are going to outwork him. Um, and the most of the people that I know that will, you know, match his work ethic or, ex, you know, possibly go beyond it. They've all been they've they've all been somehow tied in with Sweet Tech at some point. Uh, yourself, you know, the Speed family. Those names keep coming up for a reason. Because they never they just never give up. There's there's always that that quest, and we see that at the track too. When we have customers that give their their own racing program twenty five percent, we'll match it. We'll give you twenty five percent, and when we have a customer that's going to give their program a hundred percent, then Rainey feels obligated to match that effort, and and I think you nailed it, and and you'd said, oh, I don't know if he'd ever respect it or. Uh, it's he recognized how much effort you were putting into a passion of yours and he was matching it. And maybe you think it was uh, just cleaning the shop or putting together, you know, Honda parts bins or whatever it was, but it was still a passion that you had and you were putting in that effort. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned working at the shop. It's like, you you look everyone always calls oh i want gary's engine i want scott speed's engine i want jimmy mcneil's engine it's i i take that so personal cuz it's almost a slap in the face of everyone that busts their ass off to find that tiny advantage it's like it's <clears> not, <throat> it's not just the engine it's like with your with your fledgling chassis company i when you first started your brand I was sitting there watching. I was like, okay, let's see what Gary does with this. Let's see how this goes. And I mean, you can get into it. You, I mean, how many, before you put your name on something and made it public that like real public to everybody, you were doing a chassis. You had a number of different prototypes coming through your hands and you were cutting and you were welding and you were sending pictures. Well, I, I, I wasn't, welding that's what i <laughs> Rainey was helping okay Rainey do was doing so. the welding <laughs> but <laughs> it, it's not like you were sitting there buying I, i'm gonna make just crap up because i'm just talking on my ass you weren't buying a crg and putting your name on it you weren't buying a parallel and putting your name on it you weren't buying just any a tony cart and just putting a decal kit on it you were actually sitting there with a product Okay, how can I make this better for my market? And again, Rainey recognizes that kind of work. And he's like, okay, if he can give it that much effort, I can give that guy that much effort as well. Um, yeah, and I think 
it goes in the, in the same sense, though, but Rainey taught me that, right? Like, don't accept, because, like, he kept on, you know, he installed, like, so many things. Like, um, like I, I remember saying something to me, he'd be, I'd be, well, I assumed that's the way it was supposed to be. And he'd always like, nope, assumption leads to all F-ups, right? Yeah, uh, or assume and, everyone's and idiots. Never, this is other famous it's so, one. <laughs> Yeah, it, I mean, he had so many famous quotes or like, you know, like when you're putting something together on or you put something on, you got to think how something can go wrong and how you got to prevent. I mean, just so many different work ethic things or work methods or however you want to call it. He ingrained in me so many times. And so like when you see, say like, oh, Gary's, you know, cutting in, trying to hold it, I want that better, this and everything. I mean, yeah, I can say that it comes a little bit within, but I mean, I got to say, I mean, a lot of that is from working with Rainey and not taking, you know, like, well, that's, that's how OTK does it. It must be okay. Like, no, if it's, if, it, if it's not right in your mind or you see something wrong from CRG to all these big companies or anything, like, I don't want it like that. I want it correct. <laughs> I don't care if these guys, that's how they do it. Or, you know, like, no, <laughs> I want it my way. And if I think this is incorrect, I want to fix it. But, I think, you know, if I wouldn't have worked with Rainey for so long and, I mean, how many different engine packages and, and things that he made better. I mean, I literally remember, and this kind of jumping the gun, but when I was working with Maxter at CRG, we had so many problems with the shifter. Rainey Pearson fixed that because he said, no, you know, like, no, this is not right. Like, you know, and they're um, – they're claim to fame, you know, like just almost any other time. Well, we don't have any problems over here. Oh, we're having problems here. And all my drivers are having problems too. He fixed it. He yeah. said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to be the guy who just puts my sticker on it and says, well, you know, this is how it is. It's good enough. No, it's not good enough until it's perfect. And that's why I think, you know, and that's why I know Sweet Tech's been so uh, successful. And that's why I know someone like Mike Speed's been so successful because he had the same thing. He used to do the same thing to us at OGP uh, when I worked there. That's jumping the gun again. But those type of people have ingrained it into my mind. Like, you don't accept anything until it's perfect. And and that's how, you know, when I, when I was doing all the development, and granted, I'm not saying my product is perfect. It's a lot, you know, there's a lot of things that I like to improve on. You know, there's a lot of things, you know, that are maybe financially, I, I don't have the capability yet, but I mean, it's in the works and everything else. And it, just like any, anybody in any product that you produce, I mean, you make it better over time. But it's the thing of n the mindset of not saying like, this is how everyone does it. It must be good enough. No, it's not good enough until it's perfect. And, and Rainey has a huge, huge influence on why, you know, how I go about you know, my, my working method. And that's why I think, you know, I always levitate to him for advice and everything else. Cause you know, his experience and everything in business and, and, and just everything that he's done has been such a huge help. And like I said, I'm just so fortunate that he is there willing to help me. And, you know, it's just the thing. It's gotta be two way street. Uh, I've gone through so many different chassis manufacturers over the, my course of career <laughs> But I've always said, like, I will never go away from Sweet Tech. I remember actually getting in, into a situation where I was racing with IPK, and I had to go race um, races in the States when I was living over in Europe. And I told uh, the leading edge of Greg Gall, I said, I will not drive, because it was in stock Honda, I will not drive that go-kart unless it's a Sweet Tech on it. And I don't care if everyone, you know, if you think it's worse or, you know, if you got something better from this guy or this guy, I will not race. And I told him straight up, I will lose my job at IBK because I'm not going to go to one of my, what I consider family members, hometown, so to speak, you know, using on the Honda engines and run against them. I just yeah. won't. I will not, I won't do it. I'll lose. To me, loyalty on on some people in my life, I will not do it. And that's in I think showing that loyalty too. I mean, a lot of people with engine manufacturers or engine tuners are you know going off to the next great thing. And 
you know, when someone sticks with you, like Rainey has stuck with me, and I, you know, I think maybe, and I, I, I'm going to speak for Rainey, he probably sees the same thing with me, that I've always been loyal to, to him. I mean, naturally, you're going to build a relationship that uh, is a bit stronger than, you know, someone that just calls up and asks, you know, to the latest and greatest thing, and, you know, maybe they're just asking for that because they want to give it to someone they're more loyal to on the backside, so... Well, and, and that and that actually brings up a great point because I wanted to kind of point out some things that you're doing within your program. And then I'm sitting there biting my tongue because like you just said, it's not fair to the guys that are currently under your tent that have built up a loyalty with you and your program. And you're, you're <laughs> let's give you a sales pitch right now. GFCCarding.com, that's Gary's website. Uh, it's again, GFCCarding.com. You have three different chassis. We'll we'll make it brief, but I'm sitting there. Not I, I I'm not an inner workings of your team, so I'm not giving anyone that impressions. But I kind of see what you're doing here and there, and you just nailed it when you said, "Okay, why the guy that just calls that has zero experience with I don't care what the shop is, an engine builder, a chassis builder, what whatever, what." why do they think they could just get the best of the best when there's been other people that have been building that relation for five, six, seven years? Um, and does, that absolutely goes both ways. It's you know, there's stuff that you're working on right now that I, I won't even mention it because that may give somebody else some education as to what you're doing. And it's like, okay, well that kind of takes an advantage away from Gary. Um, but the, you you nailed the loyalty thing, and I, I think for the most part, most most racers, whether they're professional or recreational, I think most of them are pretty loyal. Um, I mean, we yeah we have some customers that are just diehard loyal to their chassis brand, um, and, and it would take you know quite a bit of upsetting for them to leave Sweet Tech. And then you also have the guy that has, he's not going to leave his tuner. That's it. I'm with that tuner forever, but they may change chassis and engine builders and everything else, but they have that, that relationship with that tuner. And that's, um, yeah, I think you just nailed it with the loyalty thing. Yeah. Lo- loyalty and trust. I mean, obviously it goes in any type of relationship, you know, obviously it goes, goes the mile, goes the longest mile. And, you know, being that I, I've been with Rainey for over 20 years and, and everything, I mean, naturally, um, he trusts, uh, like I always tell people, you know, in my working method, I, I, I'm never going to tell Rainey how to do my job, to do his job. And Rainey's never going to tell me how to do my job, but I guarantee if Rainey sees something on my go-kart and he thinks, Hey dude, you could probably improve that and see something that I don't sure. And heck I'm going to listen to him. Yeah. You know, and, and even maybe something if I see, you know, trends on the track or, you know, things that I can help rainy, you can, you know, me, I don't, I'm not going to tell him how to do his job, but I'm, I'm, you know, would hope, you know, I, I think he does trust my, my ability to, to see things. And I tell him like, Hey dude, I think we need to go maybe in this direction. And that that's just a, you know, a solid working relationship when, when I know I can, tell someone something they work on it and they come back it's better go out and try it i go in there with full confidence 100 percent confidence that i don't even second guess it i just okay if he says this is this is the way it needs to be i do it and uh and, and that's I, I try to make it really simple and i i like i said uh i would say there there's very there's a handful of people that have a huge influence on my life, you know, other than my parents, obviously those are the two biggest, but I would say Rainey is, is right there in the top three is, is in the top three, the most influential people of my whole life. Well, you know, that, that's a perfect segue into one. We could wrap up this episode because we're going to do three more with you and we're, we're just going to go through your career and kind of bring it all back around and, I mean, if I can predict the future, hopefully by the time we do the last episode, we have a full race season back on the schedule. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll have no time to do nothing. <laughs> That's right. And that'll be, that'll well, be great. We'll, 
uh, you'll, you'll have to be complaining. I wish I had time to clean the tent. 